Hello everyone, welcome back to Blender Halt. Today, we're gonna to be doing a refresher on the text editor. It might not be a very long video because not everyone gets a good use out of the text editor in Blender, but it is supremely helpful, especially if you're interested in Python or even just for like holding important bits of information while you work. So let's take a quick look. Now, obviously I'm in my startup file, which is different from the regular Blender startup file. But as this is a refresher video, you should already be somewhat familiar with Blender enough to understand what's happening in the interface and how to modify it and so on. So in my default Blend file, I like to have a section just for accessing the text editor. I call it the scripting workspace. And you can already see how I'm using the text editor. If I press control, and use the mouse wheel, I can zoom in and see it here. And just to know as well, the text editor is found under the scripting section of the editor list. I like to use it just to store interesting and important information like resolutions, frame rates, etc. Along the top bar of the text editor, we have a variety of general context menus for view, text, edit, select, format, and templates. And then we actually have the section to choose which file we're looking at. You can have as many files as you like, although you'll notice that in the list of files that you have, some of them have an F next to them. Now, the F, if you don't know, means fake user. We should take a moment just to talk about that in case you are new to Blender and you haven't quite gotten the hang of that yet. Content in Blender that isn't used, so if you imagine a material that's not applied to any object whatsoever, tends to delete itself to save space. That is a bit of a weird thing for people to wrap their head around to start with because, you know, you feel like if you work on something in a Blend file, it should stay there. It doesn't really, just to save space. That's actually quite important if you're like importing objects into your scene that are very heavy, so like vertex dense, and then they're deleted from the scene. So they're not used anywhere. So you won't be able to find them anywhere except for in like data lists. They could be taking up gigabytes of space on your file without being accessible in the scene. So that's one of the reasons why Blender does this self purging. Now the fake user system allows you to specifically say whether something should stay in the Blender scene no matter what happens. And the way you do that is by when you have a text file. So let me just press this new file button to make a new one. And I'll just name it new. You have this fake user badge enabled. From the looks of it, it's enabled by default for text, probably because it would be weird to type a lot of text and just have it disappear for no reason. But you can click to remove the fake user. So in theory, this file would then disappear when Blender is like reloading this file again. So just always double check to make sure that's enabled. Again, from the looks of it, it's auto enabled for text. But for materials, if you look in the material list, if you see the names of the materials, you can see the F present there to represent a fake user on some of them. If there's a zero next to the name, it means it's not being used by anything and it will disappear. Okay, well back to the text editor. So the text editor is technically a code editor. What it means is you can start typing Python based code if you want to modify things in the scene. That's if you have a knowledge of how Python can interact with Blender. That's why there are line numbers and if I just do something like this, and if I go to like view and then enable syntax highlight, you'll see that if you do start typing in code, Blender will automatically try and highlight the functional areas of it to kind of help you understand what's happening with the syntax. That's what the syntax highlight feature means. You also have other visual options, so you can choose to have the line highlighted. Again, you don't need to use code for this, but you'll notice is if you're just typing regular text and you have the syntax highlighting enabled, then you'll see specific words highlighted or specific grammar or punctuation. So if you are just doing regular text, it's a good idea to disable the syntax highlighting just so it feels normal. There's also word wrap. So if I wrote out a long sentence and it started to flow past the boundary of the editor, you'll notice that it can't all be seen in one place. It's not automatically bringing the line down. And by the way, I'm holding the middle mouse button and moving my mouse left to right. The middle mouse button effectively lets you pan the text editor in any direction. So a way to get the line to come down is to go to a view and then enable word wrap that will bring it down there. And you can see that free is actually extending to both lines. And as I zoom in and out, it's going to adapt. So word wrap is pretty great if you are managing a lot of text-based information in the blend file. 
So what else have we got? Under text, we can actually open text files. We can import them from elsewhere, which is cool. If you've got like text files full of data or again, code, you can import them in. You can choose to have a certain text run on load. So that's actually a little bit of a problem for security reasons sometimes. In Blender, you can build custom workflows in the integrated text editor in the form of like add-on code. But that also means that if you provide the file to someone else, then it can run on their computer as well. Blender has an automatic safety and security feature that prevents the auto running of scripts unless you disable it, which means that if someone writes a virus in the text editor, it won't automatically run without your authorization. But again, that's a setting you can change. And then of course you have the option to run whatever script you have in the file and the default hot key for that is Alt and P. So this is not a Python coding video. I'm just letting you know about these features. So we're not going to be doing any coding. We're just having a quick look through. So under edit, we've got a few features. There's regular text editing stuff, but also something not many people know about. So there's a little section here called text to 3D object. You can actually move the text you have in the text editor into your 3D scene using this. So for example, if you want all the text to be kept as one text object, we can press that and then it will appear in the scene here. You see that? But notice that it does not comply to the word wrapping. So every line in the text editor is going to be a line in the text object in the 3D scene. But you know, it's a cool way of getting things in there if you prefer writing in an actual text format in the editor. And if you find like the 3D view a little bit finicky to type with, then that's helpful. Under select, there aren't many important features. Again, it's just how you're going to select things from where the actual carrot is. I think that's what it's called. This little red line is, I think, called the carrot. Under format, we can indent, unindent. So just to talk about those, indenting is when you add tabs. So this is, again, more important for like if you were doing code. Notice that wherever there's a colon and it goes down, it's going to indent again and again and again. So that just keeps it like really readable. And if I selected one of these lines and then went to unindent, it's going to move it back, which is the equivalent of doing shift and tab. So we've got tab and shift and tab. That's not just useful for code, by the way. It's a good idea if you're used to kind of developing workflows and organization in text files. If you were talking about like a project and you pressed enter, you don't need a colon. If you had the colon, it would move by itself. But if you don't have a colon, just press tab. This is information. This is a task. This is a subtask, etc. So you can get used to using tabs to kind of help organize your own like just text based lists and file management and stuff like that. So indentation is not strictly just for coders, it's for anyone managing data and information. Now we also have the ability to toggle comments. So in Python code, a comment starts with a hash or a whatever you're going to call it. What's it called? Like a pound thing? We always call it hashtags anyway. I looked it up quickly. It's called the octothorpe, probably because it's got eight points to it. But this is used as a comment. So comments in code, again, I know I said it's not a coding video, but it's relevant here. Comments in code are ignored when read by the Python interpreter, meaning that they don't contain any functionality. They're strictly there to help the coder remember what was going on. So if I went to view and then enabled syntax highlight, you'd see it's all given one color, which is the color of a comment. So I've got that selected, format, toggle comments. It will effectively swap whether it's a comment or not. Then you can see that the hotkey is control and slash. So if someone is coding quickly and they think, oh no, that line of code is actually supposed to be a comment, we can just do the hotkey and that will change it. And again, another very coder centric feature is to convert white space. In code, what I mentioned before about there being indents, indents can either be represented by a tab or by one, two, three, four spaces. If you see it's the same distance. Python can support both, although most people just use tabs. But if you've got a situation where you're using tabs in most places, but then you accidentally copy and paste code in that's got like spaces instead, the interpreter can get a bit confused. So I believe that the convert white space will help fix that as well. So if you convert to tabs, you'll know that it's consistently using tabs. Now, another section to look at here is the template. So I know I keep saying it's not a code video, but it's going to be so code heavy because the template section is really for code. If you're new to Python or OSL, open shading language, which is more for obviously shading type stuff, then Blender has kindly provided a bunch of templates you can look at and learn from. So you can click on them and it will provide you with code that you can study and modify and run and just learn how things work. I think it's really nice they've actually got that as a feature. One thing to keep in mind though is that if you are using code, I recommend disabling word wrap because it will skew your interpretation of lines, make it a little bit harder to read. Just get used to using like the middle mouse click to pan around the code and zooming in and out, stuff like that. So the text editor is quite versatile. One of my main wishes is that I really wish that text was supported in the asset library, asset browser rather. What I want to be able to do is if I have a text file full of information or just code, 
you know, little code scripts you can run. I want to be able to right click on it and add that as an asset that I can drag in and out from the asset browser. So they haven't added that yet. I'm not the only one that wants it, but I wish it was there because then we could do like micro scripts that we can just drag in and out without actually needing an add on because asset libraries are easier to synchronize over like shared file spaces and don't require being enabled and disabled and stuff like that. And just to confirm that, if I go into file data, I've got text here. Oh, and by the way, this isn't in the default Blender file. This is what I've set up to like analyze the data inside of my Blend files, especially when I'm working on products. You get to it by being in the outliner and then under Blender file, and you can filter down different types. But if I look at the text data and I right click, you can see that marking as asset is grayed out. So at the time of making this video, it's not supported. You can actually see it says must be a material collection object brush pose action node group or world. Other things on the interface section of the text editor. So we know that we've got the fake user. We know that we can make and we know that we can open as recognized by the very common folder icon. We can unlink and that will effectively just set it to be deleted. And we can run script, which is the equivalent of pressing Alt P. If I click on it, we can actually see down in the info window here that it's going to try and run the script. And finally, the last section of the interface at the top right here, these are quick access UI buttons that basically enable the same thing as they do in view. So you see that we've got line numbers that can be enabled and disabled. We've got the word wrap that can be done there and the syntax highlighting. So it doesn't really take much effort to get to those features anyway, but they're there if you need them. And I might as well throw this in as well. As indicated under view, we've got the sidebar, which is control T. Usually the sidebar is by pressing T in another interface, such as down here in the asset browser. But obviously if you type T in the text editor, you're just typing T. So instead it's control T and this will give you find and replace functionality as well as properties about like the indentation, the font size, etc. And you can see as I'm actually scrolling, so I'm typing, you can see the font size change. So that is your quick refresher on the text editor in Blender. Not one of the most flesh out areas of the software, but still very useful and very powerful if you're working with custom workflows inside of your file, prototyping different scripts without actually needing like a full on add on and stuff like that, or even just like me storing general useful information as references, or even more importantly, just making notes on where you are in your blend file. You can just have the text editor open on the side with like your to do lists of what to do. So sometimes I like writing lists like this where I have like the square brackets open and I can either delete them or just replace the space with an X instead. So that's how I like to like tick off to-do lists. So if you made it this far through the video, put a notepad related emoji in the comments. You can press the Windows key and the period key on Windows to open an emoji keyboard. So yeah, put a notepad or a pen emoji in the comments to show me if you made it this far. Otherwise, feel free to support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Curtis Holt or check out my products, curtisholt.online slash store. Have a fantastic day, everyone, and I'll see you next time.